Welcome to Queen Mary 2. This incredible ship is the only ocean liner remaining in service in the world today and she is very proudly owned and operated by Cunard Line. I have wanted to cruise on here for years but for a number of reasons I've never made it on board until today. I've just completed a seven night transatlantic crossing from New York all the way to Southampton and what made this even better was the ship was looking beautiful for Christmas. I have ticked off a massive item on my bucket list and I can't wait to show you everything that this incredible ocean liner has got to offer. In this video today, I am going to give you a full ship tour, deck by deck, starting from the bottom and working our way all the way up to the very, very top. And hopefully you'll agree that this ship truly is one of a kind. So without further ado, welcome on board Queen Mary 2. The first venue for us to explore together today is the Grand Lobby. This lobby spans across decks 2 and 3 of the ship. Don't worry, we'll come back to deck 3 later in this tour. Let's for now just talk about deck 2. On the right hand side, you can see that you've got guest services. Now that's where you'll go if anything goes wrong on the ship or if you need to just speak to someone at reception. You can see that you've then got two large sweeping staircases. These are absolutely beautiful. And this is really one of the most ornate atriums that I've ever seen on a cruise ship. Walking into this space on embarkation day really does take your breath away and it's a feeling that I will never, ever forget. Throughout the day and the evening, you can sometimes find a harp here or you'll find light piano music. And don't worry, the pianist will never get tired. Now the next venue to look at coming off of the Grand Lobby is the Tour Office. This is where you'll go if you'd like to book shore excursions while you're cruising on board Queen Mary 2. Don't worry if the office is closed, you can use this drop box to make your requests and the team will sort it out for you. The next venue to look at is the Empire Casino. This is directly opposite guest services, still remaining within that Grand Lobby part of the ship. In here, you'll find a selection of both slot machines and also table games. Cruise ship casinos are notoriously a lot smaller than what you would find in a land casino. But I would say that from a slot machine variety point of view, they did have pretty much all of the crowd pleasers that I would expect to see at a casino. But in a casino where you'd find 10 of one machine, they would only have one in here, for example. You can now see the table games and let's move on to our next venue. So here is the Royal Court Theatre. This is the main theatre on board Queen Mary 2. It's not the only one though, so bear with me and I'll show you the other one shortly. This venue is where you'll come to watch the singers and dancer shows and you'll also come in here to watch the guest entertainers and also to enjoy the Cunard Insights programme, which is the onboard lecture series. So whatever you're using this venue for, hopefully you'll agree that it's very comfortable. You can either sit on the individual armchairs, or you can sit on the more sofa-like chairs. It's a really beautiful theatre. From an accessibility point of view, you can see here that the areas towards the top of your screen are all slopes so you can get chairs and things down but then there are steps as you get a little bit further down so the theater is what i would say is semi accessible now leaving the theater on deck two and heading along the side of the venue is where you'll find the games area this is where you can come along play one of the games that are supplied on board and look at the incredible ocean views. It is such a lovely place to whittle away a few hours and at the end of that corridor you'll find Connections which is the onboard meeting space. In your daily schedule you'll find that multiple different groups will meet in here. You'll often find religious groups down here. You'll also find different minority groups may use these spaces to meet throughout the cruise or if you've got a little bit of work to do then you can come and make yourself at home down here which is what I really enjoyed doing. 
One of the highlights to coming to get a bit of work done down here is that you've got refreshments. So you've got water, you've got juices, and you've also got coffee machines that are available while you're utilizing the meeting spaces. So really, really good. There's also this full service internet cafe, and that is manned for a number of hours each day. So if you would like to get online, but you don't have a device and you need to use a computer, then this is exactly where you can do it. Next up, you head further along that corridor and you'll find Illuminations. Now it is worth noting that Illuminations, the entrance is on deck three, but there's another entrance down on deck two for the stage, which is why we've jumped up a deck here. Now Illuminations is the onboard planetarium. I've never ever seen this on a cruise ship before and I was so impressed. You can see here that all the chairs sit underneath this enormous curved ceiling and you've got projectors all around the room which then project a high definition image onto the screen so that you can watch various documentaries, you can watch various shows all about space which was absolutely remarkable. Now there are different colours of seating in this venue. If this is being used as the second theatre on board, you can sit anywhere. But if this is being used as a planetarium, you'll make yourself at home in one of the red seats which recline at the push of a button. Now heading further towards the back of the ship, on the other side of the grand lobby, you're going to find these beautiful brass artworks. These really should be explored during your cruise, so make sure you allocate at least an hour to come along and look for all of the little hidden parts of these murals. I won't tell you what's hiding, you can find that for yourself. And the next venue you'll find further along that corridor is the Golden Lion Pub. Now this venue is where you can come during the day for a pub lunch. You can come in here for beer, you can come in here to catch up with your friends. It's a really, really nice space. And actually, it does feel like a traditional British pub. I'm always really, really impressed with how Cunard theme this venue. They do a very, very good job of it. You can also come in here and play darts free of charge and there'll sometimes be darts competitions. So keep an eye on your daily schedule. And if you are any good, why not come in here for a game? If not, the bar's pretty comfortable. Make yourself at home and have a beer or have a cocktail. Directly opposite the Golden Lion pub is the photo gallery. This is where you can view and purchase any photographs that you may have taken by the onboard ship photographers. You'll find these photographers available every night of your cruise, especially on gala nights, to take a photo of you in your outfits. And then you can either get them printed as photos or you can get them printed onto various gifts. So just make your way along to deck two and to the photo gallery if you'd like to explore that more. And directly next door, heading towards the back of the ship, here is Britannia. This is one of the main dining rooms on board. And if you are cruising in a standard category of cabin, and by that, I mean not in a grill suite, then you will be welcomed into here for your dinner. I love the main dining room concept on board a Cunard ship. Both Queen Mary II and Queen Elizabeth, which I was on a few months ago, do this so, so well. And I would never have guessed from looking at photos of this venue that this is totally included in your cruise fare. It is absolutely beautiful. Now, in terms of how this works, all those seating downstairs are on fixed dinner times and all those seating upstairs are on flexible dinner times who have booked open dining as part of their cruise. Time-wise, what that means is that if you're on the first sitting, you'll go in for dinner at 6.15. The second sitting is 8.30. Or if you're open dining, then you can go in anywhere between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Hopefully you'll agree, this space is absolutely beautiful. One feature that I particularly love is that glass ceiling with the blue LED lights behind. It projects such a beautiful colour all through this restaurant all during the day and well into the night. So if you're looking for quite a grand dining experience, then head along here 
for a bite to eat. Coming soon to my YouTube channel is a full dining guide from on board Queen Mary 2, so hopefully you'll join me to check that out as well because I'd love to show you more of what's on offer from this incredible venue. The next part of the ship to talk about is the grand lobby up on deck three. Now you'll remember that we were down on deck two earlier, so we're just upstairs from that grand piano. And up here, you'll find the onboard shopping. Now you've got a number of shops. I was particularly surprised to see a Liberty of London store. You've then got some jewelers. You've got the usual Cunard logo store. You've got duty free alcohol. There's quite a lot of shops to explore up here. And there's quite a nice selection between premium brands and also much more accessible brands, both for men and for women. Now coming off of the shops is where you'll find the Sham Pain Bar. This venue is, to be honest, one of the quietest venues that I found on the ship. I would never struggle to find somewhere to sit down in here, which on a sailing, which I reckon was probably approaching full capacity, is no mean feat. Now in here, you can come and get regular drinks from the bar in the chart room, which I'll show you in a sec, but it's just through the archway at the end. Or you can order speciality champagnes, and there's also the option here to order caviar with your champagne. Personally, I don't have a palate for that, however, if you're that way inclined, you can come, park yourself here, and enjoy your caviar and your champagne. Moving through the archway, welcome to the chart room. This venue is, as you can see, a little bit less formal than what you saw in the champagne bar a second ago. I did find this was a venue that filled very, very quickly of an evening. So if you would like to chill out with a few drinks and spend the night in here, I would recommend, unfortunately, heading along pretty early. Now this venue is probably one of the most traditional looking venues that I experienced on board Queen Mary 2. Even the light fittings, all of the exposed wood, it's a really, really beautiful space. But I think this is where you're discreetly reminded that you're on a cruise ship that is not brand new anymore. That said, it's still an absolutely gorgeous room to come and spend a few hours, so absolutely don't let that put you off. And again, just like the Golden Lion Pub, the bar is perfectly comfortable. So pop yourself here, grab a beer, grab a glass of wine, or grab a cocktail. Now directly across the hall is where you'll find Sir Samuels. This venue, operates as a speciality coffee shop and at night you'll usually find this venue is closed so it's very much just a daytime venue. I absolutely can recommend the hot chocolate in here. You get marshmallows, you get chocolate flakes, you get whipped cream. It's an excellent experience and you also get some pretty tasty cakes. The cakes here are included if you buy a drink. So what better excuse do you need than to get free food? Now, as part of Sir Samuel's, you've also got the tasting room. In here, you'll see events scheduled, for example, wine tastings, for example, whiskey tastings. Keep an eye on your daily schedule, and then you'll head in there to sample what's on offer. And that brings us down to the art gallery. You'll see here that this is labelled as Deck 3L, which I had never seen on a cruise ship before. That essentially means it's the lower level of Deck 3. So you go on to deck three, you then drop down onto deck three L, and this level runs directly underneath the upper floor of the main dining room. I was a little bit blown away when I experienced this. The art gallery on here is run by Clarendon, who do run art galleries on multiple cruise ships. You can expect to see all the usual stuff that you would get from an onboard art gallery. For example, onboard art auctions, for example, guess the weight of the artwork, all of that sort of thing. If you're into art, it is quite a nice space to come along and have a look. There's lots and lots of ocean views down here as well, which is really, really nice. And when you walk to the end of that corridor, 
you end up in one of my favourite venues on the entire ship. This is the Queen's Room and you'll find this on deck three. So when you come out of the art gallery, you'll climb a few stairs and you'll find yourself here. Now this venue, I don't think I've got too many words for this other than look at how beautiful it is. Queen Mary 2 was recently renovated and refurbished prior to me getting on board. I never cruised on the ship before, but I would definitely believe that this room has seen upgrades as a result of the refit, because this felt to me like being on any modern cruise ship. It was absolutely beautiful. Now, the venue was nice during the day, but look at it at night. It is just absolutely stunning. Very different to the Queen's Room on board Queen Elizabeth, because on that ship, it's a two-floor space, but on here, it's all on one level. There are also some incredible pieces of art and some incredible memorabilia in here. So even if you're not into ballroom dancing, come along during the day and read some of these plaques that are underneath the paintings and underneath the statues. It really is remarkable what they've acquired for in here. Coming off the Queen's Room, you'll find G32, which is the onboard nightclub. This is where you'll find DJs spinning records all the way into the early hours of the morning. And you'll also find the onboard party band will play in here most nights. You'll also find events like karaoke in here, which is always a really good laugh. Personally, I think it's quite a big venue for karaoke. That's a lot of people watching you. I definitely wouldn't be up for that, but <laughs> yes, makes for a good night. Now you can either sit downstairs or you can head upstairs which i'll take you up and show you in a second both floors are themed pretty much identically the seating is the same there's a couple of nice window seats upstairs but yeah generally speaking you get the exact same experience downstairs or upstairs i never would find this venue to be full i'd find it very rare that people would be walking through the queen's room to come into here most of the crowds seem to stop at the Queen's Room and then they would only really come in here late at night when the Queen's Room was fully closed. The final point in here is to mention the bar. Look at how cool this is. It's like a marble bar that's lit from underneath. I've never seen that before but it's really cool and it adds to the industrial feel in here. The next venue for us to explore today is Queen's Grill. You'll find this dining venue all the way at the back of deck number seven. And this is where you'll be dining if you're fortunate enough to be staying in a Queen's Grill suite. Now these suites are among the top category grades on the whole ship and the dining experience certainly reflects that same level of opulence. The dining room in here is absolutely beautiful. I didn't stay in this grade of cabin so I can't talk to you much more about the dining experience in here but yeah it looks absolutely beautiful. Directly across the hall you'll find Princess Grill. This is where you'll dine if you're staying in a Princess Grill suite, so usually a grade down from Queen's Grill. In terms of dining times for both Queen's Grill and Princess Grill, you'll find that in the morning you can have breakfast in these restaurants from 8am to 9.30am. In the afternoon you can have lunch from 1pm to 2.30pm and dinner time begins at 6.30pm and finishes at 9pm. It is worth noting that that's the same dining times as what you'll get in the Britannia restaurant as a guest who's staying in a regular cabin grade. What you do get that is very different in this more premium category is a far more opulent and a far more private environment. You've got the restaurants here and I'll take you directly across the corridor and show you another facility that these guests have access to. Again, I didn't stay in here. I was just granted access to take some photos and also to capture some video to show you what you could expect if you were to cruise in either Queen's Grill or Princess Grill category staterooms. Directly across the hall, you'll find the Grill's Lounge. In here, it's a shared bar and lounge area that can be used by both Queen's Grill guests and also Princess Grill guests. This is open for a number of hours a day 
you'll find that generally speaking during the day it's just a lounge that you can come and spend a little bit of time in and then at night it opens up prior to the dinner service from what i saw looking in this venue never looked to be overly busy but i guess that is one of the perks of paying such a premium fare that you are expecting to find these areas to be much much quieter so you can see here this is the entire venue there's also a grand piano over in the corner so i would expect they probably have a pianist in here each night let's look at king's court this is right beside the queen's and princess grill and this is the onboard buffet for all those staying in standard accommodations on board now for a standard buffet this is a really really nice setup i really like what cunard have done here by making it so light and so airy that actually the space doesn't feel as though there's hundreds if not thousands of people using this at any one time when you go for your meal tables are all fully dressed the way you can see on your screen at the moment so it's not like some cruise lines where you take the knife and fork from the counters and then you take them back to your table so that's all done for you this is the food serving area you can see here that it was more or less closing from afternoon tea when i took these shots but hopefully you can get a bit of a feel for just how premium this space is in comparison to some other cruise ships that you may have seen recently. One top tip that I always give on a Cunard cruise is that in the buffet area, you will find the ice cream machine. Some people don't realise that this is totally free of charge when you cruise with Cunard, and they'll always have little toppings. So in this case, you've got, I believe, probably raisins and also some caramel sauce. And then you've got available 24 hours, water, juices teas and coffees and i'll show you what teas you can get now so you know if you need to bring your own favorite variety or if the ship will stock that for you my other bit of advice is that rather than always sitting in the main area of king's court try and get these little glass sections which sit out and interrupt the promenade deck they are fantastic for people watching and also getting really really good views of the ocean now further down the buffet area, so we're still in King's Court, this is King's Court Alternative. During the day, this will serve as part of the buffet, but at night, between 6pm and 9pm, this becomes an additional payment restaurant. The cover charge in here at the point of filming this video, so I was on board in December 2023, the cover charge was sitting at $25 US per person, and the dress code applies in here too. Now moving outside, you've then got Chef's Galley. This venue, we don't need to talk about too much, but it's pizza and pasta every evening. And then directly next door, you've got the Corinthia Lounge. This was, without a shadow of a doubt, the most popular venue on the entire ship during my seven night cruise. If you weren't up early, it was almost impossible to find a comfy chair in here. You tend to find that the sofas in here by the windows they go first thing in the morning and people enjoy teas and coffees and nipping through for snacks and keeping those chairs for the majority of the day. The reason why it's so popular is that this is a venue where you get quite a lot of events. So you'll find trivia will take place in here, some activities will take place in here. There's also hobby corner that takes place in here. So if, for example, you want to meet people while knitting on board, then you can do that. There's a certain period of the day where you can come in and there's a whole corner set up for people with the same hobby. So I didn't use this lounge too much because every time I went in, it was just so busy, but it's a really beautiful space. And all the way at the front of the ship on deck seven is the Marille Spa. This is one of the best spas that I have seen at sea. I didn't expect it to feel so premium given the age of the ship. Where we are now, we are at the check-in area for the spa, going into the thermal suite. So you can see here, you've got lots of lockers. You've then got some mirrors on the left-hand side. You've then got some toilets there too, which I won't show you. And going in, after you grab your fresh towel, you've then got the thermal suite. Now there's a lot of loungers in here. So if I was in here when it was full, I think it would feel a little bit crowded. But this space is gorgeous 
You've got the hydro pool in the middle of the room. You've then got a whirlpool at the back that'll bring you back and show you in a sec. You've got armchairs all around the side of the pool and you've got loungers down at the back. Now the water in here was pretty warm. The pool was a lot deeper than I expected it to be, so that's one to watch out for. And there's a really good current in here when, when everything is activated. So yeah, you can either pay to come in here for one visit or you can buy a pass, which therefore means you get unlimited access for your entire cruise. Loungers are comfortable. It is worth noting that you're on the inside of the ship though. And off the side of the thermal pool, you've then got some facilities over here. Unfortunately, the foot spas were broken at the point of my cruise. But in here, you've got a number of different facilities. So you've got some dry saunas, you've got some steam rooms. Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice environment actually. I thought it was quite good value for the price that they were charging. This is the hot tub that I mentioned earlier, and if we spin round, you'll be able to get full visibility of the accessibility of the pool. So if you do require hoists to get you in and out of the water, that shouldn't be an issue at all. Back in the main area of the spa, you'll find this relaxation lounge, which the area we're getting to now, so this part here, looks right out over the ocean during the day. You obviously can't see anything out that glass at the moment because I got in here at night when it was nice and quiet. That covers the ground floor of the spa. Let's head up this pretty beautiful staircase area up to deck number eight to show you the second part of the spa, which primarily revolves around the beauty salon. So when you first go up, you're greeted by this check-in area and then you can go through to the various different treatment areas. Up first, you've got, I believe these would be manicure, pedicure, the feet one. This would be where you can get your feet worked on and you can also relax on the massage chair. And then you can head over into the nail salon. Now this does combine and blend in with the hair salon. So you will see the two merging, for example, here. But you could come into that area on the left and get your nails done, get them polished, get them painted, whatever, and then move over and we'll look at the hair side of things. Now it is worth noting that during the day, any windows that you see in here would then give you ocean views and loads and loads of daylight. So remember, it just looks like we're on the inside of the ship at the moment because it was night time so the blinds were all drawn. But during the day, this would be a really beautiful space to come and relax and get pampered a little. So, yeah, I tend to find that if I go for haircuts on cruises, I quite like to do it on a sea day and maybe on the same day as a gala night with Cunard. Now, going back down that lovely flight of stairs, we find ourselves all the way at the front of the spa and in the fitness centre. I found the fitness centre on this ship to be a bit bigger and more modern than what I was expecting for a ship of this age. Again, not sure if this may have been potentially touched up as part of the recent dry dock, but if you're looking for cardio training or if you're looking for weights training, you absolutely should be able to do whatever you need to do in here. There wasn't a single machine that I would look at and think, oh, I don't really know how to use that. So there's a lot of selection, a lot of range, and it was actually very well utilised by the guests throughout my cruise. Now the final thing to look at on deck number seven is the promenade deck. I find this absolutely beautiful and I just wish that more cruise ships nowadays kept a promenade deck in their design for the modern ships. You can see here, this was pretty well utilised. There was always people walking up and down these decks. It was almost impossible to get a bit of film without people walking in front of the camera. And let me take you for one lap all the way around the ship. You can see that you're actually walking on a real wooden deck the entire way around. The back comes all the way down to the swimming pools at the rear of the ship, which we will show later in this tour and then as you head up to the front of the ship you pass those areas of the buffet that I mentioned to you earlier and then you get to the front which really is something quite special. 
Now, up at the very, very front of the ship, you've got access to the very forward section, even in front of the bridge. Now, what I did want to mention here were these huge metal items on this part of the ship. You can get access to these all day, every day, and these are affectionately known on board as the Commodore's cufflinks. And believe it or not, these are actually spare propellers for Queen Mary 2's propulsion system, so it really is amazing to get out and see them. Anyway, let's go back inside because it's cold out there. Welcome to the veranda. This is a speciality restaurant all the way at the very back of deck number eight of the ship. So we're just one floor above that promenade deck now. In here, you'll find that the venue primarily services as a steakhouse. I dined in here on one night and found the food to be very, very good. I really enjoyed the setting in here and it was widely encouraged that when you arrived, you could spend a little bit of time relaxing at the bar prior to heading through for your table or do it the other way around. So what that meant was that rather than nipping into a restaurant for dinner quickly and then rushing out to get to one of the main bars, it felt like a much more luxurious experience. Now time-wise, this place is open on sea days for lunch, so you'll be able to dine in there between 1pm and 2.30pm or in the evening between 6pm and 9pm. From a price point of view, lunch was coming in at $30 per person and dinner was coming in at $50 per person at the point of my cruise on board QM2. But really, really nice environment and let us now head along to the library. We've gone from the back of Deck 8 all the way along to the front. First up, the part of the library that's being shown here is the onboard bookshop. So if you would like to go in and buy a new book, I'm not totally sure about the Titanic tragedy novel. However, <laughs> if you'd like to go in here to buy a new book to either read on the cruise or take home, then you absolutely can. Or look at this library. I loved the library on board Cunard's Queen Elizabeth. And this one, I think might be even more impressive. It's so big and everything is arranged so, so perfectly. They even have a book swap section in here where two of these cabinets are dedicated to just book swap. So you can bring any book that you have, place it in the cabinet and take another one away free of charge. And those ones you actually can take home with you as well. So why not on your next cruise on Queen Mary 2, bring an old book that you won't read it again and change it for something totally fresh. You've also got some desktop PCs in here. So if you don't want to use the internet cafe all the way down on deck two as part of connections that I showed you earlier, then you could come up here and relax in the peace and quiet with some of the most amazing views of the whole ship. Speaking of views, welcome to the Commodore Club. This venue is all the way at the very front of deck number nine, so directly above the library, so does indeed share in some of the absolutely spectacular views. I would say they're actually better from here because they wrap all the way around the ship. The furniture in here is excellent. All of the chairs are so comfortable. The tables are themed on world maps, which I absolutely loved. And look at all this glass. At night, they pull these curtains down and it becomes a really, really intimate affair. But I just love it up here during the day. You'll also find the full ship model of Queen Mary 2 behind the bar. So be sure to check that out. And a part of the Commodore Club is Churchill's Cigar Lounge. In here, you can purchase cigars. You can also smoke any cigars that you personally bring on board. And you can also smoke pipes in this venue as well. One critique that I would give of the location of this venue is that it did make about half of the Commodore Club smell quite strongly of pipe or cigar smoke, which as a non-smoker, I definitely didn't like that and would always opt to sit at the other side of that room. Any cigarette smokers aren't permitted in there. They have to go to the designated smoking areas elsewhere on the ship. Now further back on deck nine is where you'll find the concierge lounge. So if your stateroom 
comes with concierge privileges, then you will have access to this lounge and you'll also have access to the members of concierge crew in here who are able to support you with any help that you might need. Those desks, there's two of them in this lounge and they're open for a number of hours each day. So just check as soon as you get on board to make sure you don't miss them because they're not 24 hours a day. Moving up to deck number 11, let's have a look at the Atlantic Room. This is the onboard card room and it's where they play, for example, bridge tournaments. This is all the way at the front of the ship. So again, some beautiful views. This looks directly out onto the observation deck, which I'll show you now. This, honestly, I have no words to describe this. This deck is open all day. It looks right over the front of the ship, as you can see here. And if I take you over to the side here, it looks all the way over the side. It is absolutely stunning up here. I've never seen this feature on a cruise ship before, especially not being open to the public all day. So a big, big thumbs up. Deck number 12 sees the pavilion, pool and bar. This is the most of the time indoor pool, but when you are cruising in warmer climates, for example, if you cruise to the Caribbean or maybe the Mediterranean in summer, they can actually open this roof to then turn this pool into an outdoor space. During my transatlantic cruise, the roof always remained closed in this pool, so I can't show you what it looked like as an open pool. But what I can confirm is that even halfway across the Atlantic Ocean, it did stay relatively mild in here with that roof closed. So yeah, that's really good. You can also come up here to play table tennis. There'll be table tennis championships, I'm sure, during your cruise, so keep a watch for them. Heading up to deck 14. So we're now on the outside venues. So let's start all the way at the top, all the way at the front, and we'll work our way down to the back of the ship. The lookout is an observation deck at the very top of the ship. You've got this front section here, which is fully covered in. And then you've got this section here. This is just turning around from that covered in section. Look at the expansive views that you get all the way down towards the back of the ship. It is absolutely remarkable up here. This is it from the other side as well. It's completely uninterrupted. I found that cruising out of New York, this was one of the best vantage points, so definitely bear that in mind. Heading towards the back of the ship, dropping down one deck, you'll find the golf range. Now this essentially operates as one driving range with the net and they've got golf clubs supplied as well. So you can go in there, practice your swing with the reassurance that everything is fully netted and the ball can't escape. Directly opposite on the other side, you've then got the tennis court. In here, you'll find pickleball, you'll find lawn tennis. Again, fully netted, so the ball will always remain inside. Directly outside this court, you'll also find multiple shuffleboard courts. So if you're more into deck games, then you can do that there. Or you can just lap in these views. They are absolutely remarkable. Now, one of the things I love about Queen Mary 2 is the real wooden deck. You can see that on the promenade, you can see that all the way up here. I've been on some older ships recently that still have these decks and they're not really able to maintain them as well. But on Queen Mary 2, the decks are looking beautiful. Very, very well done. Now towards the back of deck 12, you'll find the kennels. This is where you can store your cat or your dog if you are looking at bringing them on your transatlantic crossing. It is worth saying that the kennels have got a huge waiting list, so if you are looking at taking your cat or dog, get booked in very, very early. One venue that was closed during my sailing was the Boardwalk Cafe, which you can see here directly beside the kennels. And now we're all the way at the very back of the ship, so we're just going to drop down now, one level at a time. The first floor to look at here is on deck 11 and this is the grills terrace so this is another perk that you get if you're staying in a queen's or a princess grill stateroom where you'd have exclusive access to this terrace it's got a hot tub it's got loungers it's got chairs and coffee tables as you can see 
the transatlantic in December didn't really provide the weather to be enjoying that terrace. However, I imagine this would be absolutely beautiful in warmer climates. You can see here how dramatic this aft of the ship is. It's absolutely beautiful. Then we're now going to drop down and explore each of those decks one at a time. So going from this girl's terrace down to the next level at the back of the ship, you'll take a multiple floored staircase. I've never seen a staircase so high or so long on a cruise ship before. One thing I would say is make sure you pause on the way down because the views even out of these little windows are just absolutely beautiful because you're looking right up in the wake of the ship. Now this is the bottom of the stairs so you come out at the terrace bar and pool. This was one of the smokers areas here under cover and then you've got loads of loungers, you've got a pool and you've got multiple hot tubs on this level before you drop down again which I'll show you in a little second. In terms of showers, you've then got two showers, both on the opposite side from where we are right now. So you can see them here. And then you've got additional shower facilities over on the other side of the pool that I haven't captured, but you can sort of see it kicking in here. Anyway, let's spin round and look at the decks that we're about to now drop down to. First of all, you've got a terrace. And then secondly, you've got the final pool on board the ship. So let's head down and have a look at the terrace. Now on here, you can sit out during the day and you can eat out here. There's some tables and chairs that are stacked up over there at the moment. Or you can come out here in the sunshine and do a little bit of sunbathing. Or you can head down to the back pool. Now there weren't many children on our sailing and the weather also wasn't ideal. But I was informed that this very back pool is the children's pool. And that's because the kids club is just tucked in there as well. I couldn't get access to the kids club, so unfortunately can't show you that. But hopefully you've enjoyed having a full look round Queen Mary 2. I couldn't believe the condition this ship is in. I was so impressed and think she's an absolute asset to Cunard. What I'd love to know from you is whether or not you would like to cruise on Queen Mary 2. Let me know down in the comments. What was your favourite part of the ship? Let me know as well. And think about subscribing to the channel to support me on my journey. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.